if you are trying to start a business, if you are taking a risk, if you are doing something new, you're always gonna find a what about. What are you doing down there? What about, what about you're starting a company that will never succeed? What about, that's not a good idea. What about, well, if it was such a good idea, someone else would have already thought of that. Have you ever met a what about? Do you know what a what about is? A what about is a person who says, well, what about X, Y, Z? It's Emily, I'm back. I'm going to do something a little different today. This podcast will be audio as usual, but also a video on YouTube. This is a different ball game than for the last four plus years, the way I've done this show, but I wanna give you guys video. There are reasons to make it multimedia. I'll get more into that later, but somebody in particular has been requesting more video and I think he's on to something with it. I'm not going to look at the camera very often and I'm really gonna to try to focus on this as that audio purist, like you're here to listen to it, but if you wanna to look too, there is a video, it's youtube.com slash Emily Bender. Today's episode is the whatabouts. You've probably met a whatabout in your life. It's like a who's it or a what's it. I think Josh Brown was the first one who used this term, the whatabouts, and I really gravitated toward that because I noticed you meet them all the time. If you are trying to start a business, if you are taking a risk, if you are doing something new, if you say something that resonates with a lot of people, you're always gonna find a whatabout. Someone has to come in and say, what about, insert the reason it won't work, or insert some nitpicky, BS reason that they are here to say what about. So just like Roosevelt, the man in the arena, the what about is the people in the peanut gallery that have no chance of ever being in the arena. They will never fight a beast, a gladiator, anybody. They will not be in the arena because they're in the peanut gallery saying, what about if you have a what about in your life, put them on mute, unfollow them, or say UFM, UFM. What about? That means unfollow me. Unfollow me, Janet. The what about is shouting from the peanut gallery about how you're losing in the arena. They're in the cheap seats, shouting, shouting. They're not in the arena. That's what the what abouts do. That's the modern version of the man in the arena getting yelled at by the people in the peanut gallery. What are you doing down there? What about, what about you're starting a company that will never succeed? What about, that's not a good idea. What about, well, if it was such a good idea, someone else would have already thought of that. Do you know where post-it notes came from? Wait a second. Look at this. Art Fry at the 3M Corp in 1971 was trying to keep his place in his hymnal and the bookmark kept slipping out down to the floor. He's losing his place. He can't keep up with the singing in church. He's like, I wish I could just Stick that bookmark in there. I wish it would just stick. But then when I want to pull it off, I want it to come off really easily. Wait, I know this guy named Spencer Silver at 3M. We always have our lunch together. And he invented this new slightly tacky adhesive. He's a scientist, a chemist. And Art Fry takes that adhesive and he puts it on the back of the paper. And then he's like, I got a sticky bookmark in my hymnal. I'm going to call it a press and peel bookmark. Art Fry created post-it notes using Spencer Silver's special glue as cited by Romy and Michelle at their high school reunion. It took him nine years to convince the executives at 3M to market post-it notes. Multi-billion dollar product. Because they were afraid to evolve and innovate. A lot of whatabouts. 1980, William McKnight said, you know what, Art? We are gonna start embracing innovation here at 3M. Let's go to market with the post-it note. The whatabouts will tell you, I don't think people are gonna buy a piece of paper with some stickum on the back. What about your brand reputation getting tarnished by a flop, a product failure? What about you might get fired? You know, nobody ever got fired for not making a bold decision, but a lot of people got fired for making the wrong bold decision. That is from Tom Goodwin. So I had this happen the other day, and frankly, I don't like to give oxygen to negativity. I really, 90% of the time, stay positive. Like Mother Teresa with the law of attraction, I don't go to a war protest, I go to a peace rally. But I think this example is 
instructive, interesting, and maybe entertaining. So I'm going to go there. I had given some really great jewelry. Like I left a $20 bill on the street, Twitter Boulevard, for anyone to pick up. Any young person who wants to start a podcast. Any old person with an existing mediocre podcast. And I said, you guys, if you are podcasting on Zoom, stop. Zoom is built for meetings. Riverside is built for podcasts. Don't podcast on a program that was designed for meetings. It's that simple. Here's 20 benefits of why Riverside is great for podcasting, why I recommend it to all my clients, why when I produce clients' podcasts, I do it on Riverside. You can do things like cancel the echo, remove background noise. You can spit out social video vertical clips, perfectly sized for TikTok, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, full screen YouTube, and you can export the audio podcast at a really high quality automatically and easily. I'm by no means discouraging anyone from starting a podcast. Quite the opposite. I'm giving you tools to improve your podcast or to launch stronger if you haven't already gone down the road of Zoom, which I've done that too. Everybody starts on Zoom because it's the thing that you know. It's familiar. It's not the best tool for podcasting. So somebody responded and this person had to be a what about? And they said, well, what about if you tell everyone not to use Zoom that you're going to discourage some potential rock stars from becoming podcasters? Okay. Talking about a great podcasting tool you could use is not going to discourage the next generation of rock stars, the Gen Zs who are going to be grateful for another tech tip. Discourage them from starting a podcast. Have you seen my early YouTube videos? I was discouraged from looking at my own face and the terrible sound quality. I discouraged myself, but I kept going. The quality was not there, but it doesn't matter. Discourage the potential future generation of rock stars. No, I left a $20 bill on the street and anyone smart enough to pick it up will be richer for it. This is not discouraging anybody. This is helping people for free. If you are in the peanut gallery and you're saying, what about, what about, just stop and pause. Oh gosh, I'm being a what about right now. Instead of doing what abouts on everyone else's ideas and activities down in the arena, why don't you walk your little ass down from the peanut gallery and go build something or do something or share something of value? Don't be what abouting on other people's stuff unless it really merits it, but usually it does. If you guys found this episode helpful, if you got a friend who is a what about, send it to them. I think they'll get the message. If you enjoyed the show, subscribe, thumb it up, send it to a friend. Make sure that you subscribe on YouTube. We are now doing this on YouTube. Emilybinder.com slash podcast has the links to everything. Or you can directly hit up youtube.com slash Emily Bender. My name is Emily Bender. My handle is at Emily Bender everywhere. Consistently the same in all places except TikTok, which is a wild, strange planet just for YouTube. It's nighttime outside. The lighting in here is not flattering. I'm not going to break my back trying to make it look fantastic. It's just going to be raw and real. Love you guys. Talk with you next time.